What up? Oh, right. right. Welcome back to As It Should Be, Paul Bertolino here in the world-famous As It Should Be studio. <laughs> Russell Rowe here in the world-famous As It Should Be studio. <laughs> oh, oh, that's how Cher would do it. Studio, oh. Tell me my boy, no one in the world famous house, you be stupid. Oh, should be studio. No. <laughs> Why are we so happy and excited? It's because we get to discuss our favorite albums of 2006 and you are there. Getting mm. your kicks. Yeah. 2006. Yeah. 2006. With Fearful Sharky. And who starts this but Tommy himself. Tommy. The King oh, of 2006. My God. Tommy, Mr. can 2006. you hear me? Yeah. What? Yeah. Speak up a little more. I couldn't. Can you feel me near you? <laughs> you see what he did there? Ah, oh, I see what he did there. Ah. Great callback. Okay. Well, I have five albums for 2006. Well, well. Wow, mm -hmm. okay. It is a marked improvement from 2005. Yeah, I will say. Indeed will it is. Say. Indeed it is. Indeed. Well, I dare say that in 2006, the music industry completely recovered again. I would be wrong. Well, at least half of it. I dare say it. it. I oh. dare say it. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. Oh, oh, oh. No, I just, you know, whatever. It's, well, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what I've managed to, to bring up. So, number five, She Wants Revenge with She Wants Revenge. Mm. That is a blank stare album. You do know the big song on that album. I do? What the one, is uh, Tear You Apart. Tear the big you. hook is, I want to fucking tear you apart. That one. I do? Yeah, you do. I don't know that. All right, well. I don't know. Would I, would I have heard it at the grocery store? Yeah, well... I mean, I don't know. Would I have heard it at the mall? No, no. Oh. Maybe in Hot Topic. All right, number four. Hot Topic, yeah, maybe. Number four, we've got Dragon Force is back again with Inhuman Rampage. Oh, dude. Yes. Dragon Force. Dragon Force. So far away. So good. Oh. All right. Number three. This one surprised me. Was not expecting such a strong showing from these guys this late in their career. Cheap Trick with Rockford. Oh, now, yeah. this album kind of falls apart towards the, sec the end of the second half, but boy, does this one start out strong. Hmm. This album? Okay. Okay. Well, I guess we'll be hearing more about this album. Well, no, we won't actually be. We actually won't be hearing any more about the album. <laughs> about it ever oh, we won't. again. This is not on your radar at all? <clears throat> it's on my radar. I listen. Okay, well, all right. I listened, I, you know, I've been aware of it, of course, since it came out, and, pe you know, with all latter, latter era Cheap Trick albums, some people say, oh my god, it's great, it's a return to form, it's the best album since Stream Boys, and other people every, go, nah, it's not that good. They say that about every Cheap Trick album is that they're returning Every form. fucking album, yeah, and you have, half the people think it's the greatest since, since whatever, and the other half go, it's another shitty album. Right. But a lot of people seem to like this one, I went and I listened to it, and I went, eh, yeah. next, and I didn't put it on my list. It didn't. It's not on my hit list. It's on my uh, yeah, whatever next list. Right. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you know the uh, the unfortunate truth about Cheap Trick is for as many great songs as they've put out, they seem to be they seem to have a bottomless well of generic material yes. to pull <laughs> yes. from. And I I don't I take no pleasure in saying that. That's a good I way like to put Cheap it, though. Trick. I, I like, like Cheap Trick. I like the I concept of Cheap Trick a lot. Yeah. Some of their earlier stuff is just fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. But they just... How many times am I going to keep hearing from them? Oh, well, they didn't manage to capture us properly on the recording. It doesn't really represent our live set. Maybe you just wrote another generic batch of songs, man. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the problem with so many Cheap Trick albums is a lot of them are just like, eh. Oh, did they? Is that what they have they, said? They, they always, always, say that. always say that. But yeah, see, they yeah. said that about In Color, and what's funny, that's a pretty great album because well, the songs are fucking great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I. We're on the same page. Yeah. We're on the same page. Uh, my number two, Wigwam is back again with Wigwam Mania. Wigwam. Another very Wigwam silly, Mania. another very silly album, but with some <laughs> unbelievable highlights on it. And then a big surprise for me, my number one for 2006, My Chemical Romance is back again with the Black Parade. That's racist. The Black Parade. <laughs> <laughs> they did not do a racism. Oh, okay. No corral? That's my couple of romance <laughs> no corral. and corral. And corral. I knew it! <laughs> 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 that was no uh, good punk. You know, I'll tell you what. Here's the thing I've really come to discover about, uh, to come to, to realize about My Chemical Romance. 
particularly the guitar players, uh, there's no there's no polite way of saying it, but in some ways these guys are totally slumming. And the whole band really is. I mean, they kind of went, you know, whole hog into a genre of music that they're so much better than, and it shows. Hmm. I mean, they are just, the, the songs are just laden with freaking complex hooks. Um, the riffs are challenging. Little shreddy guitar solos all over the place. It's like you could tell that these guys have deep, deep musical roots, and they respect so much more than the stuff that was in the scene that they were a part of. Yeah. They are overqualified for this. They, job. they truly are overqualified <laughs> for, for being like Chemical Romance. Yeah, and we actually benefit for it. I mean, the Black Parade. I mean, you know, there's like serious Queen influences you hear on this. It's very operatic. Hmm. Um, it's no, great it's stuff. Like nice. there's there's metal riffs all over the place. It's and it's also really catchy. I've I've really come to respect these guys way more than I ever thought I would. Well, so now I want to listen one. to it, but I'm gonna have to call Jesse Jackson first. <laughs> Make sure it's okay. <laughs> you gotta find out. Gotta run it by him and sharpen. Yeah, but that's my uh, that's my number one for 2006. Well, but serious question though, if they're overqualified for this, why do they keep doing that? Well, they're great well, and they like it. This stuff probably I guess. sells, you know. It's, well, it's kind of like it's kind. Well, let's look at it this way. Lady Gaga, she is overqualified for the shit that she does. That's true. And well, what's going to sell better, what she's doing That's or tough. what she's capable she of doing? Wasn't well, you know. Well, yeah. here's another thing, though. When I say that, and you can apply this to Lady Gaga too, it doesn't inherently mean that they don't like what they're creating. Oh no, I, okay? that doesn't enter into they, it at they all. They clearly I mean, like what they're, they're making doing, because yeah. it sounds like they're Joyful. enjoying the hell right. out of it. It doesn't yeah. sound phoned in. But musically, they're better than a lot of their peers were. They have influences that are deeper than what I think I suspect a lot of their other peers were. A lot of the bands that were coming to the table with this kind of music, or this whole scene, you know, they were basically capable of doing what they did. These guys are clearly capable of doing almost anything they want to. They just happen to be doing this. Hmm. And I think you could say the same thing for Lady Gaga. I think she, especially for her first two albums, when she was putting out really, really, really good, good music records, that yeah. just happened to be insanely catchy dance pop. Right. Um, but t to me, I'm not hearing the work of an artist that doesn't believe in that. She clearly believed in what she was doing. Yeah. Right. Okay, so. well. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, well. And with that, some 2006 commercials coming right at I you. I us all. <laughs> For women who love color, now there's more color to love. Introducing Hip High Intensity Pigments Makeup by L'Oreal Paris. The pigments are full body for a quicker color impact and a stronger color payoff. And you've got two ways to go. Keep it real with the harmony approach or wake it up with a disharmony look. Any way you look at it, it's totally new. Hip High Intensity Pigments by L'Oreal Paris. Aren't you worth it? Turn your shirt around. Turn around. Turn your shirt. Turn your shirt around. All right. Sorry, everybody. I, I realized I <laughs> shirt on I didn't back. have a, a new shirt on. I had the same shirt on from 2005, and we don't want to relive 2005. So I'm com <laughs> I'm getting into the present here. No, no we don't. We don't. Not in any way, shape, or form. Okay. All right, and. Crystal. Oh, it's me. It is Crystal's turn to bring us 2006. It is I. 2006. Fun facts. Mm. Eric Burden put out a new album, got a new band, and went on tour. Mm. Did you go? Eric Burden? No. Um, I went. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I was, I was thinking about if that was around the time he did his book, but that was way after the fact, yeah. I went. It was okay. Mm. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't what I expected. Mm. Eh, it was all right. Uh, on February 22nd, the one billionth song was downloaded on iTunes. Oh. And that song was Speed of Sound by Coldplay. <laughs> what a letdown. So, you know... We're doomed, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. just be straight with me, guys. We're doomed, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I thought I'd been clear about that forever. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. Had that happened like 10 years before, then it would have been Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams. Uh, yeah. Oh, God, which is basically, you know, you know. Yeah, no, that's no, that's a big, just, no that's, how, that's where we are. That's yeah. where we've been for a long time. Mm. All right. Bon Jovi's second single, Who Says You Can't Go Home from the album Have a Nice Day, goes to number one in the United States, Hot Country Charts, 
for two weeks. This is the first time a rock band has achieved a number one hit in the U.S. country charts. I'm so done with Bon Jovi at that point in time. I didn't. I was like, what? That's the first time? All right, that was the first time. Number four, Steven Tyler and Joe Perry of this band called Aerosmith performed with the Boston Pops Ooh. Orchestra in an event televised nationally in the U.S. Did you watch that? No. You, Paul? I didn't watch it. There were a couple guys, they, they did a song with Run DMC. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, okay. no, I, uh, yeah. I haven't watched that. it now. And then on August 1st, it was the 25th anniversary of MTV. How about that? 25 years. Wow. That's crazy. How many of those were music? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, probably oh, seven. Oh, it was the real MTV. Okay. The, the OG 25 MTV. years of MTV, 15 years of music. Of bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 10 years of bullshit. Yep. And then, number six, The Who released Endless Wire. Oh. Their uh. first studio album in 24 years. Go back to our album ranking to find out what we think of that album. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think we all agreed on something. Boy, yeah. howdy. And then... The last fun fact is Green Day and U2 released a cover of The Saints Are Coming. Do you remember that at all? No. I don't even know what that song is that they covered it. So weird. I believe at this point in time I was basically just trying to hide from the entire world. And then uh, the top ten albums were High School Musical cast. Number two, Justin Timberlake. Love, future love, sex, music, whatever the fuck it was. Number three, Nelly Furtado. Loose. Furtado. Number four, Furtata. Number four was the Red Hat Chili Peppers with Stadium Arcadium. <laughs> Number five was Carrie Underwood with something. Number four was Pink with something. Number seven was Beyonce with B Day. Number eight was The Beatles with something. No, with something, yeah. <laughs> with love. The Beatles album, Love. Oh, oh God, yeah, okay. Huh. All right. Oh, wait, is that the one where they kind of mishmashed all the songs together for, like, Cirque du Soleil? Yeah. Yes. That's a more enjoyable listen than you'd expect. Oh, yeah. I, I actually did buy it out of sheer curiosity. I listened to it once, felt that way, yeah. and never put it on again. Yeah. I heard it on a college radio station, and yeah. I was like, okay, it's, I get it. Cirque it's du interesting. It's, cu- it's a curiosity. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. More of a curiosity. Then number nine, Daughtry with Daughtry, and then number ten, Taylor Swift with Taylor Swift. Is the it, beginning of that monster. Daughtry? Daughtry. No. Who was an American Idol winner, I think. All right, my runners-up list, Goose Egg. Mm, I haven't heard of them. <laughs> got nothing. Goose Egg, That huh? was their hit single, I Got Whoa. Nothing. I got, <laughs> I got nothing. nothing by Goose Egg. Yeah, I Got Nothing by Goose Egg. So, here again, <laughs> one, two, three, four... I got four albums. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> on this, you actually have fewer albums. You got one less album than time. I do. Really? I only, only had five. five. It's a wow. bad year, people. It's a really bad year. And wow! You know, and you know, Crystal puts the work in. She always has top tens. I got because uh, I'm listening to all genre, whatever. I just, uh, it just, uh, yeah. I was How like scraping through jazz be? charts. I couldn't get anything. I was listening to, God forbid, God. Oh, God. Yeah, I was listening to everything and couldn't get anything. That is bad. That is dire. Yeah, so... (laughs) Coming in freezing cold at number 10 is 3121 by Prince. Oh, oh God. You know, I didn't even bother to reassess that one. I... I just... (laughs) So so you said number 10. Is this another one of those? Well, number 10 is number 4. No, no, I'm going to do it... I'm going to do it backwards to number one. But wait, you said you had four albums. Right. But, okay, this is the last one. This is number four. You're right. It's ten slash four. Then at number three, I have Broken Boy Soldiers by the Raconteurs, which is Jack White's band of dudes. And the big hit was Steady As She Goes. Good guitar poppy. I like that song. And, uh... It was power pop rock, I think. I withhold my commentary. Tommy I mean, was just being. You can say what you want. No, 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 no. He was yawning. No, I, I know no, I wasn't was yawning. Not purpose, stick, though. I don't. I was sticking was my it. thumb between my two front teeth. I can see on the <laughs> film. I see what you're doing. Well, what I was doing is what I want. Oh, see? see, he wanted to yawn, and he damn well yawned. I know, and that's okay. Is my list. <laughs> We'll continue it. It's my list list. All right, number two. All right, number two. 
is Pick of Destiny by Tenacious D. Oh, oh fuck. Oh. Fucking, oh. fucking comedy record. What year is it? Oh, yeah, it's yeah, true. Oh, you don't like... Uh, it's so okay. stupid. They're poking... No, fuck no. Okay. Fucking... No. Anyway. He doesn't like <laughs> fun. You I see somebody who doesn't like fun. Oh, fuck off. I'm somebody who doesn't like fun. <laughs> I just like my fun to be serious. That's all. <laughs> serious fun. <laughs> all right. So my number one record of this year, 2006, was called Band Apart. B-A-N-D-E-A-P-A-R-T. By this band called Nouvelle Vague. Now, Nouvelle Vague, I thoroughly enjoy because they do covers, primarily. And they do them in very interesting ways. So on this record, they did excellent covers of The Killing Moon by Echo and the Bunnymen, Dancing With Myself by Billy Idol, and Bella Lugosi's Dead by, um, whatchamacallit? Bauhaus. Bauhaus, thank you. And Human Fly by The Cramps. Mm. So they do... Like um, dancing with myself, it was done like as a, a jazzy, like a 1920s jazz tune, with uh, acoustic bass, boom, 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 na 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 and the record of na 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 na, and I was dancing with myself. I appreciate that because it takes it completely different from the original, and I know a lot of people don't like that, but they can do what they want because I do what they, I want they can do what they want they can do what they want Tommy so that is my top four for 2006 because <laughs> 2006 oh Fuck. shit talk about an EP this is good this is episode uh, EP episode EP episode yeah. yeah that's all I got alright okay commercial time <laughs> <laughs> And I also have a mention. Mm. A mere mention. Oh, dear. Mm. <laughs> New York Dolls with One Day It Will Please Us oh. to even remember this. I wanted to like this. I yes. really, really wanted did. to like it. That is why it's merely a mention. I actually really yeah. liked the opening track, and it went south after that. I really wanted to like the album, but I knew I wouldn't. Well, yeah, you know, you know, going in, you're not yeah. going to, but you not still gonna, have hope. I yeah, I shred, and like you said, that opening tune, yeah, and it's not great, but I when I put it on, it's like, well, you know what, I I could this, I can this kind of this. makes me hope that there's some good stuff on Better. the record. That you, was the best track. Yeah. You know what I felt like that record at a certain point was just now openly fucking with me, <laughs> as I was trying to like it, as I got deep into it. And I got to a song. I was like, "Oh, this song's actually kind of catchy." And I look at it, and the song is literally called "Gotta Get Away from Tommy," I think, or something like that. Yeah, there is. Yeah, no, that's right. That's what, right. I what remember is the name of that, that song? And I was yeah. like, trying to come up with a joke that I was going to say. Yeah, that, but New I York know. Dolls. What was the name of that song specifically? New York Dolls. New York yeah, no, dolls. it's something. Yeah. it was. It was pointed at you. It was pointed directly. Pointed yeah. at me. Um, but yeah, I really, I really wanted to like that record, and I just didn't. Mm. I think Morrissey was responsible for that record oh happening, my wasn't God. he? Well, anything Morrissey's responsible for is you know, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. This that song is called. We are looking for the. There we go. The, track listing. There we go. Uh, gotta get, gotta get away from Tommy. Gotta be, yeah, yeah. Gotta get, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> well, the feeling is mutual. Tommy, gotta get away from that album. Yeah. All right. Okay. So my actual honorable mentions. 
Sloan would never hear the end of it. I'm fucking. T- What's it called? Never hear the end of never this. Never hear the end of Sloan. You are never gonna hear the fucking oh, end of God Sloan. God damn it! Or drink. <laughs> Y'all drunk by now. Tom Petty with Highway Companion. Talk about an album I wanted to like more than I do. Like, it's not a bad record. Tom Petty doesn't make bad records, but this is one of those sort of like, mm, it's a little boring. Yeah. He does make bad songs, though. Well, there are, yeah, there's some songs I don't like, but overall, like, I don't know of a, a, an album by Tom Petty that's like, oh my God, that album. You know yeah, what I mean? That's true. It's right. usually with Tom Petty's like, oh, yeah, I can't even remember one song off that. <laughs> you know, that's how bad Tom Petty kind of gets. Right. Oh, in, in the, you know, overall. In the grand, yeah. yeah. You know? Hmm. Ray Davies, or Ray Davis, if you're saying it properly, Other People's Lives, his first solo album after the, the breakup of the Kinks. Ray Davis. What? Ray Davis of the Kinks. Yeah, but you said Ray Davis. I said Ray Davies, and I said Ray Davis if you're pronouncing it properly. Oh, I Because that's actually how you pronounce that. Oh, really? Yeah. Seriously? It's not Davies? It's Davis. What? Get the fuck out of that's here. That's how you pronounce that. We, everybody in the U.S. says Davies, but we are, we're all saying it wrong. How and I still happen? say Davies because even though I know it's Davis, I can't call him Ray Davis because he's just not Ray Davis to me. But this that's his is fucking, weird. That is his name. Dave Davis and Dave, Ray Davis and Dave Davis. How did that happen? Well, because, you know, we're Americans. We da- D-A-V-I-E-S. Oh, that's Davies. Because it is. But that's but not like, how why, you pronounce that. Why wasn't anybody corrected in 1960-whatever? Well, why the hell do they have to put an extra goddamn letter in there, then? <laughs> it's <laughs> color all over again. Uh, you know, color. it's just, well, it's kind of like, you know, rumors. Why do you have to throw the extra you U in Rumors. There? You know, what's this R shit? Isn't it just ass? Ass. You know, you'd better to speak English, people. Why you? is it a bumper shoot? It's an umbrella. Come on. Yeah. You and your fucking lorries. Come on. It's not a boot. No. It's a trunk. Pram. What's a pram? It's a stroller. Yeah. Come on. A lot of tossers. What anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's Ray Davis. Yeah. I had, I, this is the first, I, I was today years old when oh. I learned this. Wow. Oh. Uh, and I hate saying wow. that. <laughs> it's, it's you know what? It's fucking Davies. They lost the war. It's Davies. They anyway. lost the war. <laughs> anyway, we have spoken. Mm. The Yanks have spoken. That's okay. Right. All right. So, oh, but yeah, the Ray Davies album is I. You know, it's not bad. It's one of those bone dry al- albums where the vocals are way over compressed. Oh. Bone dry and way too high in the mix. Okay. Mm. You know, and not the songs a fan of that. are pretty good. But I can't really tell because the album, the sound of the album is so terrible that I almost can't get through to it, to the song, to even find yeah. out if it's good. Zero stars, can't recommend. Mm-mm. But, and that's one of my honorable mentions. All right, so my number 10, my actual list, my list list, number 10, a band called The Radio Department with a record called Pet Grief. Pet Grief? Pet Grief. What? Just heard this record. I, you know, it's, it's okay. It, it, it's a dream pop album. Okay. Dream pop, which is, you know, I don't know if you know what the genre of dream pop it tends to be dreamy music that's a lot of synths and uh, a lot of atmosphere, mm-hmm. which, of course, I tend to like more in a 60s and 70s kind of manner. This is more synthy, but I like it. Like, there's some good stuff on it. All right. My number nine, though. A classic artist. Classic rock is back. David Gilmore. Oh. On an island. Oh. Now, I don't like those later Gilmore-led Pink Floyd albums. But this album, I, I kind of like. Like, this is actually like a pr- like this is a better Pink Floyd album than those later mm. Gilmore-led Pink Floyd albums. Mm. But anyway, yeah. So that's Very my number interesting. Nine. My number eight. The Scissor Sisters. Say what? Yeah, with ta da! Wow. Yeah, the okay, second that's album. A surprise. Yeah, I thought that I one was like pretty good much. too. I, I think I liked the first one more, but the second album was pretty good. Yeah. Huh. Number seven. Old Reliable. You're having trouble getting albums on a list from a year? You can always turn to the great Motorhead! <laughs> yes, with their album Kiss of Death. Motorhead. When in doubt, just put a Motorhead album on your list. Come and on. Give it a listen. Give it a listen. Yeah, <laughs> give it a listen. Yeah, because that's the thing. Motorhead, at their worst, is like, is not bad. 
<laughs> this That's is a ringing which endorsement. Say, well, I, I got to qualify that. I'm not saying this is them at their worst. Like, it's a perfectly good Motorhead album, but you know, they're not going to suddenly come at you with like a reggae album. They're going to give no, you a not, Motorhead album. No, they're not. They definitely you know? took the ACDC approach for the most yeah. part. Yeah. And I think they're better at it than ACDC because there are ACDC albums that I don't like. Yes. I've same. heard Motorhead albums that I may not find memorable, but I've never heard one. I was like, that sucks. Like, mm. you know, Motorhead just does Motorhead. Motorhead. If you like it, you're good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know there was so but many But coming in at number then. six. <laughs> oh, they kept going, f- like, right up to the very end with oh, Motorhead sure. Records. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They put out an album, like, in, in the last year of, of his life. Yeah, his they life. did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. freak out. Coming up next is an album that I have way too high on this list, all things considered. Oh. And especially considering things that we have discussed in recent episodes. Oh. The Who with oh. Endless Wire. <laughs> What? <laughs> uh, I think this is one of the. I think this is one of the. Uh, I was talking before we start shooting. I was talking to Tommy about how I hadn't quite gone in and had the chance to really tighten up a couple of lists and make sure they were in the right order. Uh-huh. I think this is one of those lists. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who are you? And what did you do with Paul? You might have fallen in and hit your head. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But. Okay. All right. It's, you know. Okay. I, I, you know, the Motorhead and Sister 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 Sister, 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 sister albums. Sister, sister Sister albums are probably better than that Who album, but you know. Twisted Scissor Sisters. Now that's Twi- a tribute. Scissor band. Twisted Sisters. What? Wouldn't that be good? No. <laughs> anyway, next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. All right. Well, number five. <sighs> oh. Yeah, you know my my top five are definitely in the right order. My number five, Donald Fagan, with his third solo album, the third in his trilogy. This is Morph the Cat. I think this is pretty good. I think this is better than the last Steely Dan album. Oh, word? Yeah, it's 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 really. Donald Fagan was pretty good, could have been putting out pretty good Steely Dan albums oh, <laughs> at this no. point under his own yeah. name, and uh, yeah, I think this is pretty damn good. Okay. Number four, an album I know you guys don't like because you guys have already spoken ill of it, <laughs> but I don't think it's bad. It's a lot better than Musicology. Spoken That's Ill. Thirty One Twenty One by Prince. Yeah, it's, just, it's not uh, great, but I don't. Th- I don't think it's a bad album. Prince really could have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. He just yeah. I he don't left know. the building a long time ago. We, we could have a whole episode where we just yes, talk we about could. Prince. Yes, maybe we, could. we should do. We that. should maybe do that. Yeah. One of these days. Let us know in the comments. Okay. Well, number three, as I limp along here. Okay. Yeah. Number three. <laughs> Elton John. <laughs> With the captain and the kid. Oh yeah, the sequel I forgot about to Captain this. Fantastic and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. Yeah. Obviously, it's not a pimple on the ass of that. the original album. Mm. Yeah. But this is another in that vein of songs from the West Coast and Peach Tree Road, where he's almost kind of trying to do a Tumbleweed Connection vibe, and it's all songs, uh, chronological, autobiographical songs that kind of pick up where Captain Fantastic left off. Because Captain Fantastic just is about their pre-fame years and ends when they become famous. This album picks up when they become famous and goes to the end. And uh, there's quite a lot of songs in this that I really like. Hmm. You know. I only listened to it once. I, I like it. And it's not that I didn't. I was like, this sucks. I just was like... Yeah, you heard it once nah. and was like, oh yeah, anyway. Okay. Next thing. Yeah. yeah. But okay, my number two... This actually was a surprising album for me. I really was surprised by this. I heard it back, you know, I didn't just discover this, but even when I heard it then, I was like, holy shit, how could this album be so good? Howard Kalen. What? Howard Kalen, of Flo Netty fame, of Turtles fame, did a new album in 2006 called Dust Bunnies. <laughs> wow. And it's pretty fucking good. His voice, he sounds great. Like, his voice is totally on. Like, he... It kind of sounds like some of the really good Flo and Eddie stuff from the mid-70s. A mm-hmm. little bit modern kind of stuff. But, like, you know, he just... He hooked up with some guy who was able to kind of, like, guide him through recording this album, you know, like, at home. Oh, okay. But it's pretty fucking good for what it is. It's like, whoa, how could Howard Kalen make a new album in 2006? And that it's pretty like good? That. Okay. What's it called? Dust Bunnies. Dust Bunnies. More homework. All right. But my number one, the same artist I had at number one in 2005, Josh Rouse. With the follow-up to Nashville, Subtitulo. 
if that's how you pronounce it. He moved to Spain, and then everything started to become oh, Spanish. Spanish after that. And this album is nowhere near as good as Nashville or 1972, but there's some pretty, pretty, pretty great songs on it, too. So Okay. And so, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's right a whole lot of par- Paul Core and a couple of, huh, who's that, what the fuck's that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your typical Paul Your typical list. Typical Paul list, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Paul Core and blank stares. Yeah. A little bit of Ray Davis. <laughs> yeah. Right, Ray Davis, Davis. yeah. Well that done, Paul, crazy. well done. Yeah. I can't believe it's All Ray right. Davis. That's weird. Sneak this in on you. Speaking of harumph. Oh, harumph. We're here we're harumph. here to hate. We're hating. Do, do you want me to hate? Well, I, let me see. Were you the first? Yeah, I, yeah, why don't you hate yeah, first? Yeah, you go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. okay. Hated it. So, I've got some dishonorable mentions for 2006 because how could a year like this get by us without there being some First up, I've got Paris by Paris Hilton. Oh god. Oh. Wow. Forgot about that one, didn't you guys? I sure did. Oh. Okay. I have something to say about this record. Oh, no. Tell us about it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, um, I, I was in Perceptive Bees at this time, and we were we were in L.A. We were there doing some shows, and we were staying at somebody's place, and one of the guys who lived in this apartment we were staying at, was they were making that record at the time. His sole job, he was working on this album, his sole job for the whole album was pitch correcting her vocals. He had no other job. It was such a big job. You don't say. That was his whole job. I simply don't believe it. (laughs) Really? Yes. Yeah, he wasn't doing anything else. Like other people were doing instruments or doing, you know, engineering this and that. He had the Herculean task <laughs> of pitch correcting all the vocals. Shit. Well, Damn. if you want to talk about Herculean tasks, why don't you try listening to the whole album? No, thank you. She uh, she does a cover of "Do You Think I'm Sexy," <laughs> the Rod Stewart Ans- song. Answer no, no. Okay, anyway, but do you yeah. remember shortly after this album came out, or the single "Stars Are"? Tone Deaf or whatever the, the single was um, oh, came yeah. out where she was at a Prince show and Prince like coaxes her to come up on stage. Oh yeah! So she goes up on stage because she's a celebrity, and then he goes, "Let's see if she can really sing." And he goes to hand her a mic or some shit. And Prince knew the answer to that. Question. Of course, he knew full well the <laughs> answer. Called her shit out. Called her shit out. That was some shit right there. Yes, wasn't. that was yeah. He fucking trolled her in front of the whole crowd. Yeah. But what was even better years later during the musicology tour when he did that to Kim Kardashian. Did he? he called her up on stage not to sing but to dance and he was like come on Kim you got rhythm don't you get your ass up here and she was like <laughs> and she got up there and he's like dance <laughs> and she's like <laughs> and she's like get the fuck out of here yeah. <laughs> so great. Oh, no yeah. once again Prince, Prince knew damn well whether yes. or not she could dance oh mm-hmm. no so good god I love it <laughs> Uh, okay. Right. Uh, next up, I have Bad Out of Hell 3, The Monster is Loose by oh, Meatloaf. Wow. Oh, wow. This is how wow, far wow. it's fallen to, from mm. best of list to worst, worst of list. Of. He, uh, it's so bad. Uh, Meatloaf is just, I wanted, I wanted him to just be better. He's a tragic figure. He is a tragic figure, and he went out 
not great. Mm. He went out like a, he was like, wasn't he like a vaccine denier yes, or, or, yes. or anti-vaxxer really bad. or really bad, whatever. And you see, at this point in time, I forget exactly when it happened, but I believe that you could hear on this record late career meatloaf. Did you ever see? You can even hear on the recordings where it's like he's forgotten how to actually sing. It's not that he forgot how to go to pitch, but it's like he forgot how to sing on time. He would start every line late, like he was struggling and warming up to get into it. Right. And it just got more and more extreme the older he got to the point where it was it wasn't just in concert, it was even on the recordings he was doing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you could start hearing because that. Because they can here. go in and nudge that right. shit yeah. and they still yeah. couldn't get it right. You could start hearing that shit at this point. It's just and the the songs are just abominable. It's just there's just no there's nothing to see here. People move along. Um, did um did uh, what's his face write the songs for that? Jim too? Steinman. I don't think he did. did. There might be one or two. Unlike Bad Out of Hell two, Back Into Hell, where Steinman did write the songs and most of them are terrible. I think this one. I don't even think Jim was really very heavily involved <laughs> at all. This time he didn't write them in most. I don't think I don't think he was very involved. I could be mistaken, but. Mm. Yeah, it was just it was just bad. Wow. And then I also have oh god, it kills me to do this to these guys. But I already I already did them dirty once. Do it. Twisted sister with a twisted Christmas. Oh, this is not what I wanted. What? No, a twisted now, Christmas. When one time it, they make yeah. a new new album. So these guys are firing on all eight cylinders again. Live, live, live. Yeah. I mean, the the problematic still hungry aside. They could have gone in, and, you know, they put out that song 30, which you brought up. Which is a great which track. Which is actually really good. And it proved that they could still put out a good fucking record that yeah. sounds like the Twisted Sister that you want to hear. And word dropped, because I was like heavy on like the Twisted Sister like fan pages and everything. Mm-hmm. Any, any trickle of news, I was like, ah! And like word had gotten out that they were going to be doing a new record. And then this came out, and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no. No, send it. No, I'm, I'm like, go go back. <laughs> no, no, go back. Is, in, no, go back into the about. studio. You're not. <laughs> this is, is not. The, is there still more sessions booked? Go oh go God. back. Go yeah. back. And it's not you that know, it's not that it's like necessarily appallingly bad. It's cringe in the way a lot of Christmas albums can be. Mm. Well, especially yeah. when they're kind of like novelty kind of Christmas albums, it's which like is, a novelty this one clearly record. is. It it's really a novelty is. Record. But for real, this is what she. You guys That's came out swinging with fucking Under the Blade, and you're going to go out with a twisted Christmas? And then that was it. That was it. They were done. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have no done. idea. I think there may be some done. politics involved in why they could just never get in and do a new album of new material. I don't know. I don't know if it's that, that D was just... If, he, if the well had just run dry as far but as I good don't material think it had, goes. Because like, he has no trouble going out and making solo records. Yeah, but they're not good. Well... Whether Never you let like the bastards not, get us down is a different case because that was a lot of old that was material, early material demos from like over like ten or fifteen year period that he re-recorded. That was old material. Yes, yeah. that was like the best of his of his gems from the closet. Yeah. But when he does, just goes out and does like when he put out like that single of "We're Not Gonna Take It," but it's all slow oh, well. and sad <laughs> on piano, and he's in the desert, all dressed in white. It's like what? D's lost it too. He's lost his mind. He's yeah. out. Of, he's out of touch. It was slow. Yeah, he's, it, was, it was like it was yeah. serious and slow and dramatic. Yeah, but it's just like come on, man. Like acoustic? No, like piano. Piano. Oh, it was dramatic and that yeah. I did not know about. But but that's none of those are my actual worst of the year. My worst of the year. So. You, What's interesting that you mentioned that Elton John record and how you said it's a sequel to Captain Fantastic, right? Yeah. That's a risk to do that. More often than not, it's almost universally true in my what I've what I've come to know is come to observe is that when when an artist or a band goes back and tries to do a sequel to a beloved album many years later, mm-hmm. it's usually always really bad. Really bad. So if that Elton record is actually good, that's kind of an exception to what seems to be the rule. Well, I I I like it. I don't think you would go and listen to it and go, oh yeah, that's really good, but I don't think you would listen to it and think it was bad. Okay. Well I've got a sequel album as my number one worst of the year, and that would be Operation Mind Crime Two by Queen's <laughs> Okay. There are some problems here. First of all, first of all, no Chris DeGarmo. No interest from Tommy. Flat out. When he left, that was it. I'm done. I'm done. 
But at this point, now Jeff Tate's voice is starting to show some trouble in 2006. And it was like a glimpse of how bad it was about to get. And he was really running the show creatively, from what I understand. And this is just bad. It is just directionless bad crap mm. that has absolutely nothing to do with the original Operation Mindcrime from 1988. You want to talk about... If you want to really do your damnedest to, to draw attention to how far you've fallen, put out a sequel to Operation Mindcrime in 2006 with the main creative force from the band long since gone and your lead singer now sounding tired. Zowie. Yes. Well I, you, I shouldn't do that because I wouldn't say anything by Queensryche but Oh I, I, I fuck with Queensryche hard up until Empire. After that, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I really have never been much of a fan. Though. Dude, I wasn't originally, and they have just grown on me in a way that I could never, ever, ever predicted. I love, love classic era Queensryche. But after Empire, starting with uh, 1994, I think The Promised Land, I'm like, what is going on? You guys lost the plot hard. When they did the tour for that record, they're out. They're doing like costume changes, and they've got like a bar on stage with people acting out parts. And at one point, Jeff Tate gets wheeled out in like a wheelchair by a woman dressed as a nurse. And it's like, oh shit! You guys took all the all the mistakes that Sticks made in That's the early eighties. That's what I was gonna 80s. say. They turned into Sticks. And you you thought that was a good idea. That's what fractured that band. And now you're now you're gonna do that shit. Wow. But anyway, okay, well. I don't I don't want to belabor the point, but yeah, Operation Mindcrime 2. Nope. That's a no official no boy. Official no boy. Zowie. So yeah. Over to Crystal. Oh yeah, me. Bad stuff. Uh ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. Crap. Hmm. Yeah. Hoobastank. No! <laughs> oh man. Oh. oh. You actually that takes yeah. Yeah, all over. All right. The new cars. The new cars. Did you listen to the new cars? Yeah, I did. And they I, don't only, like I don't it. think they had a full album, but they had a couple new songs. Yeah, I didn't like it. No, no I think so. they did a full album. Well, they had a, a full album that was live material of them doing classic cars, cars live, and then yeah. there were a couple and of a couple new, track new songs. Oh, okay. But they don't have a new new album of new all new material. Gotcha, gotcha. I didn't like it. Don't waste your time. Strumming with the devil. The Southern Side of Van Halen. <laughs> oh, I think Wait. I remember this. I never listened to it. It was but... bluegrass, country rock, and blues rock versions right. of Van Halen songs. But like by tribute artists? By like different... Like a tribute thing, yeah. yeah. They did this with ACDC too. Called yeah. It was called Hazy Dis Dis Dixie. Hazy yeah. Dixie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Not good. All right. We got uh, The Duchess by Fergie. Oh, London Bridge is down there, but that back. Oh, for you. Shut me. up, bitch. And then we have Styx with a kid's orchestra. I remember that. I don't, I don't even remember the name of the record. I didn't write it down, but it exists. Just Google it. Yes. I listened to a couple of songs on it. It's what you think it is. But the number one worst of 2006 is Happy Holidays by Billy Idol. Oh, where he dude. covered Christmas standards. Wow. Oh, man. Talk about falling far. <laughs> so it's a nice day for a white Christmas. Christmas. That's a missed opportunity, Billy. Oh, my God. Yeah, like he, he was trying to do a serious thing. Like, I don't yeah. know if he was listening to Andy Williams and caught the bug or what. Because what we want from a Billy Idol album... Is some crooning it's Christmas stands. Yeah. Crosby Christmas tunes. Like, what are you doing? You know, what is it with these motherfuckers getting old and starting to make Christmas albums? And you have some people, like Neil Diamond started, like every other album was a Christmas album after a while. And yeah. Why? You know. Nobody wants that from you. Nobody wanted to hear that from you, William. Ugh. No good. Okay. So that's the end of my hate list, my short hate list. Oh, Paul, oh, wrap, wrap this up. Lay, lay, the, lay the stinkers on us, Hopefully Paul. I can recover from that list <laughs> enough to go and do my own. <laughs> All right. You can do your own list. <laughs> do, do your, your own, own list. list. <laughs> All right. Well, I have two runners up and a worst of the year. And, uh, well, first off, somebody who probably, I think, 
has some Christmas albums later in his career. Barry Manilow with Greatest Songs of the 60s. Oh, Barry. He got to a point where he started doing, every year he would put out some covers album. He did one of the 50s. He did a 60s one, a 70s, 70s 80s. 80s. I think he did a 90s one. He did Great American Songbook oh, volume one, two, course, three, all the way to Of course six. he did the fucking song <laughs> album. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. But this Greatest Songs of the 60s, not only a lot of, his, not only are a lot of his choices really just lame, but it's just karaoke. Mm-hmm. Like he, it's basically, it literally sounds like him He's singing a over a karaoke machine. track of the original. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, it, like you know, it's just a really thin, bad copy of the original arrangement. Huh. You know, and him not singing as well as he used to. Yeah, you're Barry Manilow. He, you could have brought in a band. Yeah. Something. He had two albums this year. That one and Greatest Songs of the 50s. <laughs> so I guess that's a tie. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm. But anyway, next up, Chicago. With Chicago 30. Oh XXX 30. Okay, so I saw that, that that was released, <laughs> and I specifically couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to check it out. I couldn't do it. Because it, I knew there was no way it was going to be what I wanted. Yeah, it, it wasn't what you wanted. It wasn't, it wasn't what, what I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't, it wasn't what anyone wanted. Nobody wanted. wanted. No. So who is that album for? If it's not for you guys and it's not for me, who is it for? Contractual obligation. Whoever maybe? you are that it's for, Have let yourself it. be known down in the comments. <laughs> yes. Oh boy. Chicago 30, but of course it's Roman numerals, so it's triple X. Triple X, yeah. <laughs> you know, so they're edgy too on top yeah. of it all. Oh, dirty. Yeah. But my worst of the year. We should have had, well, I don't know if we, we necessarily should have had a trifecta, but we maybe should have all three had this on our list. <laughs> maybe. Considering something that happened on an earlier episode. I have my worst of Paul Stanley with Live to Win. Oh, God. You know, oh, I just didn't man. even bother. I didn't even bother. <laughs> have, you, have you actually listened to this? I think I heard one or two songs when it came out. And it was pretty bad. It's so just, yeah, it's just, it's, I mean, I'll give Paul Stanley that he's not just trying to make a Kiss album that's all him on vocals. He did make, but it's like a modern, I don't know, is it new metal? It's not really new metal, kind of. It's like modern rock with Paul Stanley on vocals. Okay, well, you know, yeah. And it's just bad. Live to win! Yeah, no thanks. It's terrible. You know what, it's so, what's so funny about this is he is going to come up again many episodes from now with a different album and it won't be on this list yes yes yeah you damn straight that's coming up we we know we we know it's oh, yes. The, yes yes that is that is a spoiler yes. is it better than that Folgers commercial uh, far better than the, well <laughs> depending on how you look at it <laughs> okay depends <laughs> the, on what you mean by better yeah the Folgers commercial is pretty amazing in its own way i mean you know <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so there you go. That's our worst of 2006. And... And scene. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Yeah, and I got two words for you. Cam E. Silverado. Big fella, what do you drive? Ford (laughs) F-150. Frames, huh? Dodge. Chevy. You want a real frame on the right truck? Ford. F-150. That bad boy's fully boxed. When you learn the truth about trucks, you'll know why only one truck has earned the right to be called F-150. So All right, we are back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. Hey, we had everybody. to come back because, well, we owe you something. We owe yeah. you a little something. It's a little something called. <laughs> a little it's something. Like people with their bad albums, we are contractually obligated to do. Visit <laughs> Photo Time! All right, so here we have Crystal in 2006, and she says This is me with three of my favorite students when I was the visual art teacher in the School for Legal Studies. From left to right, Sonika, me, Iman, and Nakia. They have all grown up to be fabulous women. It was one of the worst schools I've ever taught in. We used to joke that like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we were on top of the hell mouth because high school is hell. Except the principal wasn't a demon who turned into a serpent. She was just a drunk, beyond unqualified mess who shouldn't have been within 20 feet of a school. The air conditioner behind us? It was 20 years old, never worked, and some jackass kid sliced the cord with a machete. No joke. 
And this is me in 2006 with Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Yeah, he was doing a benefit show on somebody's private property, and a friend of mine was working for the catering company that was, well, catering this event. And he was able to get me in as though I was part of the catering. He said, you know, just chop some vegetables and you're good. We can get you in. So yeah, chopped a few vegetables, and then come showtime, got to go out and watch the gig, and, and afterwards got to meet Brian, and he signed my pet sounds, and it, it was actually, it was a really amazing experience, and, and I mean, look at look how happy I am in that photo, come on. And this is Tommy in 2006, and he says, Around this time, I was starting to starve myself and go to the gym obsessively. I became convinced that I had to be as thin as possible, as though I was in a Sunset Strip glam metal band in the late 80s, living in a storage unit, surviving on Tic Tacs in a dream. So there you have it. That is Crystal and me and Tommy in 2006. <laughs> All right, so that's us in 2006. Oh, my God. Right. All right, thank you, everybody, for watching, and thank you, everybody, for trudging your way through this really long episode. I'm, I'm sure it was very long. I, actually, looking at my... Your guide here. Yeah, it looks like it was longer than the last episode. So I you guys believe may have had it was to... an unbearable slog. Would be the term. <laughs> yeah. I anyway, yeah. The term is we were trapped in the doldrums. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all you people who love the 2000s are going, "What are you guys talking about? Yeah. That was amazing!" Yeah, so great. Right. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click the little bell for notifications. And most importantly, come back because next year, next year, next week, it's going to be next year. <laughs> 2007. 2007. Yeah, so come back for that. We will see you soon. Ooh. What's so funny about it? What? Peace, love, and understanding? That too. Ah. Ah. Wreck it. <laughs> this is good content. Mm. I'm doing it for a reason. Ah. That's All for right. the OnlyFans. Okay. Fuckers. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing it because I'm in pain. All right, let's fucking do this shit. I'm in pain, Wait, too. It's pain and pleasure. Mm. I'm in pain all the time. Now he's just throwing shapes. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm throwing, I'm throwing shapes at him. Now you're voguing. Martha Graham, Martha Graham. I'm voguing Martha shapes. Graham. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's good. Two. Well, 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 hey! Woo! <laughs> let's do that again. Oh, my God. Who was that? I, that wasn't me. Tommy! Wow. This is good B-roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope you're getting your ears fixed when you go to LA. Oh no! <laughs> oh my Three, gosh. Two, one. Well, all right. Right. Welcome back to Has Shippy here. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> Take three. <laughs> mm, three, two, one. Well, all right! right.